Lauren and welcome back to my channel Fix Sheet Up. Today I'm going to be redoing this dresser that we've had for a couple of years now and we were lucky enough to get from my in-laws when we moved out to our first apartment. What I love about this dresser is that it's super sturdy and it's overall in good shape. There's a few things that I would like to fix up about it um, and I'll show you guys a little bit in detail when we get later on in the video. But what I'm going to do with this dresser today is I'm going to pickle slash whitewash the top of it and the drawers and then I'm also going to show you how to chalk paint the rest of it. So I'm using some really cool products by Dixie Belle today and this is a white pickling stain and it kind of gives it a really cool whitewash and pickle effect. And then I'm going to do the sides in this really cool blue gray by Dixie Belle and this is a chalk paint so what's really great about chalk paints are that you don't have to prime the rest of the dresser before you use a chalk paint you can go right on it so it saves an extra step that you would have otherwise with a different type of paint and then I'm going to go over the top of it with this um, gator hide so what it's a really cool um, a really cool cover and it'll give it a really good um, solid foundation on top it'll protect the top of the dresser after we stain it and we'll also put it on the drawers as well and we'll use this sponge that's also by Dixie Bell to help apply it even. All right, so I'm just going to take a um, wet cloth, a little bit of soap on it, and wipe down the piece so I can get off the residue that's on there. And just make sure that we don't have anything that we're competing with with the paint when we end up painting. And a lot of the stripper will get off some of that gunk as well, so I'm not going to spend too much time scraping that off. Um, but it is good to wipe it all down so that you have a really nice clean surface to work with. Okay, so next we're going to take off all of the hardware on the drawers so that they don't get messed up when we paint them. And I'm not confident if I'm going to keep those or if I'm going to do something different on them as well. So we got to take those off as well. What we're going to get this guy off of here is we're going to use a putty knife. If you have a chisel, that's awesome too. It's going to be a little bit more sturdier. This putty knife is a little bit flimsy, but I think it'll do the job. And then we're also going to use a hammer. So I'm going to see if I can do it so I can show you this way. Uh, but I might have to put it on the ground so I have a little bit more leverage over it. But we're just going to put the putty knife, or yeah, the putty knife underneath here and take the hammer and gently try and put it underneath it. So I'm going to put it on the ground just so I have a little bit more leverage. We're getting a little bit, it might take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to uh, put this, um, I'm going to just keep working around it and see if I can get enough leverage underneath it to pop it off. Okay, so that honestly didn't actually take as much time as I thought it was going to, um, and so within a few knocks of the hammer, I was able to get a lot of it um, lifted up. And so I'm just kind of gently going around this. I really want to try not to um, not to damage it too much because I am going to stain this part. So we really want to have as little damage as possible when we're staining wood because you're going to see all of that. So we do have a hole back. We just have a hole here. I'll probably put this or another one back on just because... When you putty over something, it's great for paint when you putty over a hole, but when you stain, it's not going to get, it's not going to look the same. You're going to be able to notice that hole pretty well there. So if I do, I might put something over this so that you can't see that. So, um, but that's how you get one of those off. Again, I used a putty knife and a hammer and it really helped. I tried a few other things that I Okay, so I'm about to strip the finish off of these drawers and the top here. And what I'm going to use is 
this clean strip and I've actually never tried this spray before so we're gonna learn this one together um, usually I'll get the stuff that you paint on um, but we actually just had this in our house my husband bought this so we're gonna try it out um, you should always wear gloves when you're using stripper um, it's going to need some time to set and I'll put it in the video um, how long this one specifically it looks like 15 minutes actually is how long you want to let it sit on there before you start to scrape it and most times you're gonna to need to do it two to three times it depends on how um, how much it's just it, if you have a lot of layers on here like if someone painted this a few times or um, stained it a few times like you might need to do it a few times to get everything off it really just depends on the type of product that was is on your dresser so I'm hoping that either two to three is sufficient for this and we'll see how it goes. I took a pot from like a, a planter pot. Um, you can use any bowl or whatever you have laying around. Um, it's just what I had available. And I put a trash bag inside it. What this is going to be really good for is when we start to scrape everything off, instead of having it all fall in the ground, which some of it will and that's fine, that's why we have a tarp down. Um, but we can easily put a lot of the excess in here and it'll help kind of when you are scraping, it'll get all of the gunk off really easily because it'll have a hard edge, but it'll also really help you with cleanup afterwards. sand these. I already wiped them with some mineral spirit and um, we're just going to take a sanding block and sand them up a little bit. They're pretty good overall so they don't need too much sanding which is really nice. Um, so just going to do that to them. Okay, so you can probably see that there's a little bit of stain still left here that I missed. Um, it didn't come off with the stripper, so I'm actually going to, um, since I already wiped these out with mineral spirits and I missed that earlier, I'm going to take the mineral spirits again and I'm just going to kind of work at what this, like this leftover stain here. And it'll start to lift up. It might take a little bit of time, but it's honestly going to be a lot better than bringing back the stripper and sometimes you're just gonna have like some of these stubborn spots and between mineral spirits and a little bit of elbow grease from your sanding it's gonna come off so don't be too concerned and it depends what you're going to do over this so if I was doing like a darker stain over this I probably wouldn't be that concerned about it but since I'm gonna whitewash it I do want a, like as much possible taken off of there um, but I think at the end of the day, it'll add a little bit of character. So as you can see, a lot of it's coming off already. So I'm just going to keep working it a little bit and um, just try to make it as good as possible. So I finished sanding all of these and I wiped them back down with mineral spirits one more time. Um, I think a lot of the dust should be off, but it's always safe to do another last wipe down before you start staining and use a tack cloth. So what this does is it helps pick up all of those, all the extra residue from sanding and make sure that it doesn't get in your stain because we don't want to have like clumpy looking stain um, or have any bumps on the surface. So this just kind of helps eliminate that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, each time I stain just in case I'm outside, there's a lot of stuff going around and I just wanna make sure that I don't have anything on here before I start staining each piece. So we're about ready for staining. It is pretty thick and so um, it doesn't require a lot and you don't want to dilute it or anything. Um, and what I have here is two old t-shirts and 
that's I'm gonna use one to apply and one to wipe off so it's just important to remember which one is which though it shouldn't make too much of a difference we just want to make sure that we're not applying more when we're done with it so I'm just going to dip in there and I'm going to apply it on the surface and make sure it always go in the direction of the grain when you can. And as you can see, like I just dipped a little bit in there, but it's really a lot goes a long way here. strokes make sure I get in all the nooks and crannies because we probably are only going to do one single layer on this because it, we just kind of want it whitewashed all right so now that I've done that I'm going to go back with this clean rag and just wipe off all of the residue sunlight but it does have that whitewashed effect and then once we put the gator hide over it it's gonna look really cool start painting on here I have already done the first coat up here um, and I'm letting it cure it has to stay it has to dry for six hours at least before we can put the top coat on it. So I want to get started on the base of the dresser and we're going to paint it this really pretty like blue gray from Dixie Belle. It's a chalk paint as I mentioned before which is really nice because we don't have to do any primer on here. We don't have to and usually like if, depending on the color and this is kind of in the middle here so we'll see how many coats I need to do but a lot of times the darker coat or the darker colors of chalk paint, you really only need to do one coat a lot of times. Um, it's pretty well, it covers pretty well. Um, and so I've had really good luck with chalk paints and I'm really excited to try this by Dixie Belle. And I'm going to use two different brushes today. I'm gonna to use this smaller one for the more detailed areas. I don't really wanna use a huge brush for that. And then on the sides, I'm gonna use this bigger, this bigger one so that I can, get it done a little bit more quickly. Um, you'll see a lot of people use what's called like, I don't know if this is the actual terminology, but it's a chalk paint brush. Um, and it's usually a little bit more rounder and it it's usually around 25-ish dollars, depends what brand you get. Um, it is a good investment if you are gonna use a lot of chalk paint products. I honestly haven't seen the difference too much between using a chalk paint brush and a normal brush. Um, I've also used foam brushes for chalk paint. It's really nice product, um, chalk paint, because it's pretty self-leveling, so it you don't want to use a cheap paintbrush, and you don't want to use haphazard strokes or anything, but chalk paint is super forgiving, from, from in my opinion, for, 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 for beginners, um, because it is so self-leveling that I think that you can get away with um, not using a chalk paintbrush, and right now mine's... Um, a little MIA, so that's why I'm using this one. I don't want to buy a new one before I figure out where my old one is. So um, that's what we're going to use today, and I'm going to get started.
Okay, so what I've done is I've wet this sponge, and this is a sponge that is um, provided by Dixie Belle. Well, you have to buy it separately from um, the Gator Hide, but it's what they recommend. And um, so far, I highly recommend it as well. It's only like $8. It um, can obviously be reused again if you clean it off properly. And it really has helped apply it really well. I did it on the drawers already. And what I did is I wet this sponge just a little bit before I started using it. I wrung it out so there shouldn't be any additional water left on the sponge. You don't want it to like wet the entire surface area but you want to get it a little bit damp so that it makes it easier for it to apply and I just put it on this paper plate here and what you want to do is just kind of like dab it a little bit you don't want like a ton of product and you want to start from one end to the other and just go in one line 